Hi, I'm Kurt, and on today's episode of Grandworks, I install MB Server in Libre-Elect using Docker. Plus, I answer the questions, what is that anyway, and why would you want to do that? Stay tuned. Before we get into the how of installing MB inside of Docker, we first should address the what and why. Libre-Elect follows in the path of Open-Elect in being a just enough OS. It's a purposely pared down operating system that is laser focused on serving up Kodi. As a result though, it doesn't have a lot of extra libraries and tools that would be considered common on a full featured operating system. This matters if you want to install a package like MB Server. MB itself isn't tremendously heavyweight, but it requires a relatively large amount of dependencies. That is, it needs FFmpeg, ImageMagick, lots of standard libraries, and then the 800 pound gorilla in mono. Absolutely none of these dependencies will be typically found in a stripped down OS like Libre-Elect and so must be shoehorned in. This isn't trivial. MB with all its dependencies has over 5,000 individual files and can take up to 180 megabytes of space. This is very nearly the entire size of a fully working Libre-Elect instance. And that's just one package. Maybe you want Sonar, or Couch Potato, or Transmission, or Saab NZBD, or any number of apps just like that. They each have their own set of dependencies and pretty soon your Just Enough OS is as stuffed as a full Ubuntu setup. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just separate all of those apps with their dependencies into their own boxes or containers where they don't depend on anything in Libre-Elect itself and can't interfere with any other apps? Well, that's where Docker comes in. Docker is a low-level framework that creates containers for individual apps. You can think of these containers like their own little operating systems or computers that are dedicated to a single app. Well, just like Libre-Elect is dedicated to Kodi. MB then would have a Docker container dedicated just to it and all of those 5,000 plus files are segregated into its own little world. The only real difference is that Libre-Elect runs on a physical computer while MB would run inside of a Docker container that is itself running inside of Libre-Elect. What this does is it makes each new application a single download with a single package from the Libre-Elect perspective. You can then add, delete, or update any of these apps completely independently of anything else you're doing with Libre-Elect. It's very slick. Now, the container keeps all of the libraries and files separate from the OS, but there does need to be still some kind of integration with the OS. If there wasn't any kind of integration, then there wouldn't really be any reason to run that particular app on our HTPC in the first place. There are typically two integration points. The first is the network ports. Libre-Elect has its own ports that it uses, such as TCP ports 22, 111, 139, 8080. MB will need its own TCP port 8096. So Docker is responsible for mapping the internal port coming out of the container to an OS level port that our HTPC is exposing. The second integration point is the hard drive itself. Not all apps will need this, but the ones who do need to share files with Kodi will need to map an OS level directory to a virtual directory inside of the container. More on that later. Okay, that's just enough technical details, so let's move on to actually doing something. All right, first things first, let's install Docker. This is in the official Libre-Elect add-ons and is a service. You might notice that there's an MB server right underneath Docker. Yeah, MB is actually a supported package directly in Libre-Elect, but well, it doesn't update as regularly as you might like, and there's a good chance it'll be removed at some later date anyway. The Docker solution is just a better option all around. How long it takes to install is going to mostly depend on your network speed. Okay, so that's that. Docker itself is now installed, but that won't do anything on its own. We need an application image to actually run, and for that, we'll choose those from the linuxserver.io add-on repo. Now that that's installed, we can go back up to the repository selection page and choose our new Docker repo. They only have services, and as you can see, there are a pretty decent number of them. There are even more available outside of this interface, but well, that's maybe a topic for a future video. Let's choose MB, and again, how long you have to wait will be extremely highly dependent on your network speed, because MB isn't small. It does do it all in the background though. Just for fun, let's take a look at our new add-on. As we can see, it properly shows MB as being from linuxserver.io. Now, take a peek in the configuration. The only parts that matter are the two maps. 
See, since MB will run inside of a Docker container instead of inside of libre-elect directly, it won't know about the normal directory structure like slash storage. Instead, it sees an entirely separate file system. So if we want MB to see files running on the hard drive instead of in the container, we need to link up a virtual directory inside of the Docker container with a real directory in libre-elect. This essentially fools MB into thinking that it's accessing the movie files in slash data slash movies inside of the container when it's really accessing them from slash storage slash videos inside of libre-elect on a physical hard drive. You only need to change those if you want to access movies or TV shows in a different directory or if you want a new mapping for maybe something like music videos. But that's it for installing Docker in MB. Super simple. Let's start setting up MB. It's configured via a web interface, so step one is to track down our IP. This is in the system info. So fire up a web browser and go to that IP with port 8096. MB starts up the first time with a quick setup wizard, which is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't belabor the point here. Let's pay a little special attention to what folder we choose when setting up a movie-based media pool. Remember how we mapped slash data slash movies for just this purpose? Well, now is the time to choose it. You may notice that MB doesn't actually show slash storage at all. That's because it doesn't see it. It's inside the container. A few more clicks along with a few more choices and you're done. Now if all you wanted MB for is to enable streaming, then you could be completely done right now. But doing that just kind of neuters MB and deprives ourselves of the awesome integration available between Kodi and MB. That requires a plugin. Our path so far has been just a bunch of pointing and clicking, but unfortunately we can't do that in this step. This does require some special voodoo. Specifically, we start by adding a new source via the file manager. It doesn't matter what you name the media source, but the URL needs to be http kodi.mb.media. That done, you'd think we could just go to the add-ons list to see our new source, right? Uh, nope, it's not that easy. Instead, we need to go to the install from zip file option in the add-ons page. This can actually be accessed in any number of ways depending on your Kodi theme. That's kind of unfortunate. If this is the first time you've done this, then Kodi will demand that you go to the settings page and allow a very potentially damaging thing to happen. Ooh, scary. But. Well, this is a known and safe repo, so it's safe this time. Yeah, you, you usually probably don't want that enabled normally. From the zip file, we choose the latest non-beta repo. Okay, that's it for the steps that require spells from the high priest. Now, if we go to our add-ons repo, we can see the Kodi MB add-ons. Finally! This repo has a bunch of categories, but they all just show the one item, the MB plugin itself. After it installs, it asks you for the MB server. There are two choices here only because Phoenix is my real home theater system. I'm filming this on a VM called LibreVM since, well, filming these tutorials is messy work and I don't want to interfere with my running system at the moment. You'll likely only see one choice. That done, it prompts you for a few default choices. One of the things that makes the Kodi MB plugin so powerful is how incredibly configurable it is. You can choose a very custom experience from a rather large set of options. I'm going to stick with the defaults for now since delving into the nitty gritty details is far beyond the scope of this simple video. Maybe later. At this point though, there are no movies. So let's fix that. There's a number of ways to get a movie over to LibreLec. My favorite is to just mount a shared drive and copy the files over. It shares the drive at the slash storage perspective, so the videos folder that we see is actually the slash storage slash videos folder that MB will be using in the end. So let's copy over a random movie. All of the other reindeer will do just fine. And just for completeness, let's SSH into our box and verify that the movie file is indeed in slash storage slash videos. It is possible to set up MB to auto scan any new files, but that's not the default, so let's force a scan. If we go to the metadata manager, we can see our movie was recognized and MB did its usual superlative job of pulling in all that metadata automatically. MB is awesome at doing that. Back out to the movie gallery and we see our all of the other reindeer in its full glory. This is really why you'd want to use MB in the first place. Cody may be super powerful and we all love the staggering number of features it provides, but 
Wow, does it do a terrible job at managing all of your movies and associated metadata. MB makes all that trivial. Going back to Cody, we still don't see our movie. It is possible to configure the plugin to auto sync, but again, that's not the default here. So let's go down to the add ons config and perform a manual sync. Jump on back to the movie selection, and voila, there's our movie. And that's what I love about the Cody and MB integration. The Cody MB plugin will take complete control of the Cody databases, and so all of the MB managed movies appear as first class movies in Cody itself. There's no need to go to a third party media source like with the Plex integration. Instead, you get the metadata and movie management plus streaming from MB, while the whole thing feels kind of invisible when you're using Cody. It's a win win. And there you have it. We added MB to our Libra Elect box using Docker so that it runs independently, yet still gives us all of the functionality that we need. Too, too cool. And as always, thanks for watching.